Hi, this is Jeff with Northern Tail Sharpening. Uh, this video is about freehanding curved grooming shears. Uh, I know you all use a clamp and all that, but I, I sharpen 40 or 50 shears a day, and it's easier for me to do it freehand uh, because I'm sculpting the shear. And most times I'm not going factory, I'm going functional with a lot of these shears. Uh, one of the first things you get any grooming shear, first off, this is a salon shear. That cuts hair, okay? This is a grooming shear. It does not cut hair. It cuts fur. Whole different thing. And we don't sharpen this one the way we sharpen this one. But the first thing we do is we make sure it's adjustable. Uh, as you can see, the tips aren't really closing here. And that comes from being dropped. You're gonna find all kinds of problems with grooming shears that you're not gonna find with salon shears because they get dropped, they get kicked. And so we take our handy dandy uh, uh, handle bender, we bend that back so she closes and we have a little uh, a little ways to uh, cut that hair right there. If, it, if it's out here like this, it's going to snag the hair every time. Same thing with thinners and chunkers. Thinners and chunkers, you have to have the teeth at least halfway down that blade. Otherwise, if it's out here like this, it's going to snag the hair. It's not going to cut. You're not going to have a clean cut with fur. Same thing with a chunker. If the chunker is out like this, it's not going to cut clean. It's going to, it's going to uh, grab the fur. And uh, chunkers will always scrape. Uh, I know a lot of them don't like uh, tension that's kind of tight a little bit, but they're going to get used to that. In order for this shear to function properly, a chunker, if it's too loose, it's going to grab right in here, right in there, and uh, then you're going to have to redo it. But uh, a lot of them loosen it up because they think that adjustment is for convenience, but it's not. It's to adjust the shear so it'll cut properly through fur. Okay. We're about to do the curved shear. Uh, we got an inside and an outside curve. I'm just going to take these two pieces here. It's already, they're already apart. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to do. Uh, when you're, when you're, when you have a clamp on and you're pulling straight across like this or laying it down like this, you're, on a curved shear, you're going to bevel the front of this shear. And we don't want to do that because, and it, 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 it depreciates the, the tips. It's going to narrow these tips and you're going to cause a bevel there and a bevel you're not going to get out. So, we're going to use the first half inch. We're going to do the outside ride. And all we're going to do is put a bevel on it. A little tiny bevel. But it's the same bevel all the way around. Now we're going to put another one right next to it. And I have a little twist I, I put on the end like that to make sure I don't have any bevel on the, on the tips. I mean, these were... Uh, these were... Uh, junky shears, but it's, I'm showing, showing you the idea of how to do this. I'm going to go over here and we're going to polish it. I'm going to polish it where I can leave the burr on. Because I don't want any of this uh, felt to come up and dull the blade. There we go. we got a perfect convex. And we still got burr. In order to take the burr off, we're going to use just a piece of leather. Takes the burr right off. Using toilet paper or cutting toilet paper is stupid. Uh, you all do what you want. Here's the inside curve. Here's where people make a lot of mistakes. Uh, here's where a lot of, a lot of, they bevel the tips on these so bad. But when, we, when you freehand, you're just laying it down on there. You're not pulling anything. So you're just laying it down. Now we're going to put a bevel right next to it. And I do a little twist on the end to kind of keep the convex on the tip. 
also don't look bad. We're sculpting this shear. Of course, you won't do this with, with a painted shear. Painted shear, we're gonna we're gonna tackle one of those too. Pretty easy, isn't it? Convex pretty nice. Take my leather and we'll take the burr off. Okay, how we do the inside rides? Pretty simple. We're gonna do the inside ride first. This is a stone that came out of Europe. It's it's a it's contoured stone. It's 800 grit. It's actually a water stone. It's not a it's not a ceramic glass stone like you're used to using. But put water on it, do the pivot, and just work it back and forth. Believe it or not, this takes this takes a little bit of technique because uh, if you don't do it right, you will dull it here. You can see we got a perfect ride line on it. Okay, the outside ride, same thing, back and forth. We're gonna do that pivot, and then we're gonna walk it down. Nice ride, same as this. Done with stone. Okay, now <clears throat> we get a lot of shears in here for somebody that didn't know how to how to put a uh, convex edge on. They put a bevel edge on, and I'm going to show you the difference in a bevel edge and a and a micro bevel as far as how it works. Here's a convex edge. Uh, the reason. The reason for this edge is when you cut the hair, it doesn't move. See that? It don't move. See that? It just chops the hair like a guillotine. That's what you want in finishing. The creative groomers, competition groomers, uh, people that uh, want to put show cuts on, like being judged, that's the, kind of, that's the kind of cut they need, just like that. But if you put a micro bevel on there because you can't put a convex edge on or you're trying to convince them that's a better edge, that's fine. But that I can, I can do the same thing. I can make that con, that micro bevel cut just like a, a, a convex edge for about a week or 10 days. Then the bevel takes over. Here's one that we, we sharpened and uh, it cut like a, like a convex shear and we went and got it today out of the shops, been there maybe 10, 12 days. Now watch the hair, it's moving. See the hair is moving? What that causes is divots in the cut, makes a choppy cut. And people who do a lot of Bichons, Bevingtons, any kind of uh, show cuts on poodles, they can't have that. They can't have that hair moving. That's why they usually get their shears sharpened uh, right before a competition. And uh, even though uh, you can make that micro bevel cut like a like a convex shear, it's not going to last because the bevel takes over after that crisp edge goes dull and it starts compressing the hair. I talk about that in my book. Compression. Convex edge cuts clean. The bevel edge has a lot of compression. It holds the hair and it slices the hair. This chops the hair. This slices the hair. And you can make that micro bevel cut like a convex edge until that very tip starts getting worn. Then the bevel takes over and compresses the hair again. So something to stay away from if you're if you're you've got people that are doing competition or anything like that. Okay, let's uh let's fit, take this micro bevel and we're gonna make a we're gonna fix it. Now other sharpener showed you how to uh, <clears throat> fix it, reconvexing a shear, and what they did was they went backwards 
and then then they moved in they they actually convexed it first and then got a burr we're going to do the complete opposite because this is a curve shear so i'm going to go ahead and get a burr first and then i'm going to convex it and it's real easy to do freehand Now you're thinking now, what angle is that? I don't know. What's the angle of a convex edge? It's zero. How you get there doesn't matter. I'm just putting little tiny bevels. And I'm twisting it at the top to make sure that I have that convex edge on there. Because the tip was pretty beveled. You're doing a straight shear, it's good to do the convexing first and then get the burr. But on a curved shear, it's best to get the burr first and then convex it. There we go, we fixed it. We get a lot of shears in here where, where folks have put bevels on them. They'll last a little bit, but that micro bevel will start to take over after the crisp edge that you put on there takes over. Okay, uh, one thing I want to talk about is corrugation. Corrugation on a grooming shear is not recommended uh, because most of the time it's, it's a tension problem. And what we're trying to do is we want to go deep. Okay, and these cheaper shears, and I, I call cheaper shears anything Amazon or anything like that. These are uh, Lily's Pet, and we got some uh, Purple Dragons here. Uh, these are all shears that are made in Pakistan. They're very flimsy. See that? See how, the, see how they get press apart real, real easy? Okay, here's a Kenchi. This is a 90 gram shear. It don't press apart very well. And uh, most groomers today, they, they want to go cheap. They don't want to spend $150 or $200 for a shear like this that's made out of good steel. That's rigid. That'll hold an edge for a long time. What they do is they go for something like this because somebody on Facebook or something said, hey, we got these shears off Amazon and they're really nice. And uh, you get four of them for 40 bucks, And uh, that's a $10 shear. And they're made out of 410 stainless. And... Uh, I talk about those in my book as well, the different shear grades. Uh, it's sad, but uh, it's true. Here they are down here at the bottom, and uh, Pakistan definitely is the lowest quality shear made. They're made out of 410 stainless, and they make mufflers out of this stuff. So uh, they put it together, with a, they make a shear out of it. They're great shears. Now these shears here, these uh, Lily's Pit, uh, King Star, there's a there's a number of them that's got that little jewel in there, and uh, these I would micro bevel because they'll hold an edge a lot longer. And most of the time, the groomers that buy these shears really don't care; they just want it to cut. And uh, a micro bevel will work a long time on here. If you put a bevel or if you put a, a convex edge back on here, it'll dull out in two weeks, and then you're putting another twenty dollar edge back on it. The shear's only worth ten bucks. So it'd be cheaper to buy more shears than it is to pay a sharpener to put a $20 edge back on it. But uh, there's another shear I want to talk about, and that's Foxy Roxy. Foxy Roxy has some good shears, and there's some problems with their shears. And one of them, I, I don't know if you can see this or not. You can see the paint on the inside of a Foxy Roxy. If you can see the grain of the metal underneath the paint, that's a good, that's a good thing. But they do make some other ones that are yellow, orange, and all different kind of colors, blue, pink. And you can't see that grain through the paint. And you'll sharpen that shear, and all of a sudden it'll start grabbing on, on the tip. Uh, it's nothing you did wrong. 
the paint is too thick. Once you take that metal off there, the paint is too thick. So you've got to get the paint off the inside. You just rub it with a, a drywall sponge or something like that to knock the paint down a little bit. And uh, it'll, it'll start cutting at the tip again. There's just too much paint. I think they roll a car out and they roll a stack of these scissors in and start spray painting it. Because I've actually seen... Uh, on the pink ones and the orange ones, I've actually seen where you could see paint dripping on there, and that's not good. Uh, corrugation. Uh, corrugation in a grooming shear. I would, if somebody's doing some fine detail work, this is a little six inch shear. I would corrugate that because it's not going to be used to take any bulk down in it. It's going to be used to do some fine work around the eyes, around the face. Uh, ears, stuff like that. If you corrugate a shear like this, you corrugate the thumb blade. Don't corrugate this blade. Why? Because when we use this, we go behind the hair and we pull towards us and we cut. If you corrugate this, this blade right here, when we go behind and we go to cut, it's going to push that hair along that, along that, uh, that cutting edge and you're going to get a little J on the end. Trust me, I know. I've been grooming 41 years. I've, I've done it all. And uh, I sharpen my own stuff. And I learn by my own mistakes. But uh, corrugation is... Uh, I talk about it in the book. And if you corrugate the top blade, uh, this is what's going to happen. Uh, the best thing to do before you corrugate is tighten the shear up. Because most of the time, if the shears, if the, if the blades are spreading apart, it's not because it's not sharp. If you sharpen the blade, it's sharp. And um, it's got to be a tension problem. I would, I would adjust the tension first before I would corrugate anything. Because this is what's going to happen with corrugation. You're going you're gonna to be pushing the hair out. And that's going to cause divots. And uh, we don't want divots in any of the cuts. If you're doing Bedlingtons, if you're doing Bichons, if you're doing... Uh, uh, any kind of uh, poodle work uh, where, where you're, you're styling a poodle, there's five different cuts on a poodle, uh, you don't want that. So it's going to cause divots. And uh, uh, we want, we want uh, if we corrugate a shear, we want that hair to stick to it because we want to we want to make a straight cut. And that's the reason for it. And I, I, would, only, I would only corrugate small shears for doing fine work. Uh, in closing, I want to demonstrate something. Uh, this is my stone. I've been using this for years. Uh, before we used these stones, we used to put a PSA on a piece of uh, PVC pipe. This is a great stone for doing ride lines on the inside curves, but it takes technique. And if you don't do the right technique, you're gonna you're gonna dull that shear. I've got a I've got a thing right here from Precision Sharp. If uh, precision sharpener, uh, this little thing right here, it uh, it's fantastic because if you're not good at doing ride lines on the inside, this is the machine to get. It's foolproof. I'm just I'm just set my own ways, but I've. Uh, it comes with a one inch piece of PVC with some PSA wrapped around it. But uh, I did about 60 shears on this before I had to change the paper. What you do is you put the shear on there and you adjust this. This, this adjusts this back and forth like this. So you put it on.